Right at it. Right at it. Oh, John and he's Spence. done it again. Just as he did at the John Deere for his first win. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Go Get That podcast. It's a pleasure to be with you here on this Monday afternoon, Monday evening for Dan and Jordan over on the East Coast. Uh, and we're here to talk some golf with you again. Uh, we should have another We have another episode coming up Wednesday, probably, I'd assume. So, yeah, it's um, it's player's talk. Uh, I believe Jordan, did you end up pulling the trigger on Scotty Scheffler for the triple double or no? I did. I did. Okay. So we all took him. Yes. All right. So that kind of inflated our numbers. Nice. Well gotta done. Do what you gotta do. Well done. Well, well done from us. Out. You still got a pretty good edge because of, uh, Mr. Shoffley. Yeah. Like, just South of $2 million, but, uh, there's some separation now. There's yeah, of course well, the Tom Ken WD is. Is a brutal one uh at the the players but uh yeah appreciate mr lowry's sunday 66 to make him a couple hundred grand so yeah i it's it's a solemn week because not only did jay spieth play god awful um scotty scheffler is looking prime hoods unbeatable currently which is not fun uh, this is now two straight weeks with the putter and with the new putter and two wins. So, and the scariest part of all of that is that he putted fairly average this week. Um, I believe he gained just over a shot. Um, and he gained like close to 18 from T to green. So that's great. Uh, yeah. so I, I, yeah, I, I said this in a tweet, um, He's the best go. I didn't get to watch enough of Woods. I, he's the best golfer I've ever seen with my eyes. Uh, he's doing things that I guess a little bit differently than Spieth. I mean, I guess Spieth was the guy who just like made forty footers. Um, I Scott, every single iron shot is at the flag. Every single miss is short or long. It's never right or left. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable, truly. Um. That shot he hit into the par three thirteenth after driving the green on twelve. I mean, those two approaches into greens back to back had to have gained three plus shots on the field. I mean, not only did not he miss the putt, but I mean to drive it to twenty feet and then to follow that up with a dart on one of the hardest holes on the course. It, it's just it's it's unbelievable. And and Jordan touched on this too. It's not even that he's just throwing darts all over the place. Like he plays the required shot every single time and executes it. Uh, he knows exactly what he needs to do and he knows that he can hit a spot. So he never needs to play to a pin. That he doesn't need to, because he knows he can play it to wherever he needs to perfectly. So yeah, it, it's, there's a lot to discuss. Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on Scotty before we get into Spieth, um, because both are not fun topics to talk about. They're As complete one eighties. That's for sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Jordan. Three sixty, some would say. <laughs> you can go down. Um, go ahead. I was going to touch on the strokes gain stuff really quickly because Scotty's back nine on Sunday. He gained, I think it was four point two strokes gained T to green on the back nine alone. Like he 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 shot a sixty four. And I think he played the back nine in three under, maybe. And he basically made zero putts on the back nine. That's what they're saying. And it's like, <clears throat> that's what the stats are nice. insinuating. That's insane. Like, he felt no pressure at all. He knew that he had a couple of um, known kind of, uh, I don't want to call them losers, but... Shoffley is known to crumble under pressure. I, I wouldn't say Clark is a loser. I mean, at least Clark. No, Clark I, didn't yeah, have I, his I, best stuff. Shoffley was mostly who I was. I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. About. No, um, I, and I, and I, and I agree. Lead, I agree. 
it wasn't it wasn't really Clark's day from the get go. No, um, yeah, he just didn't he have didn't his best stuff. Well. Um, Harmon put in a charge. Um, a little Shoffley, yeah, Shoffley bogeyed fourteen and fifteen. Like you kind of knew that was coming. Um, and Scheffler was just perfect. And it's it's kind of crazy now. Um, and I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm enjoying it, but like I'm appreciating it. Because I don't I'm think not. we'll see a stretch of golf like this for a long, long time. Maybe the rest of your life. This might be the best golf you no. have in your life. Yeah. And I think that's worth appreciating, and I'm going to do that. Um, but when that baby comes with his, I think we shall see a downturn in the game because that's what happens. So. Um, well, I and I mean, everything about this week was like his, his woods week. Like, not only did he hit the ball like prime Tiger, he – he like – almost had to withdraw because of an injury and then went on yeah. to win the golf tournament. Like it was ridiculous. So yeah, he's old. So sad. It makes you, Car- it makes you realize given how, I mean, I want to hear Jordan's thoughts on. Yeah. Story, I want to hear your thoughts too. But um, It makes you realize like very few guys can actually compete with him. I think Wyndham had an a plus week. A week, Shoffley played his A game and they still lost. And I don't even think Scheffler was like, yeah, but that is a minus game, you know. Shoffley just is Shoffley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we can I mean you just too, but like, you just first of all, you knew that putt wasn't going in on seventeen. Um, yeah, that's, and it was tough. I mean. <laughs> To bail out on 18 in that situation is just horrible. Um, like he didn't even take the pin on it all there. Um, so it's just man. The Shoffley agenda is is very much alive. Uh good for Cl- I mean, yeah. Clark played a, a winner's type Sunday. He didn't have his best stuff and he probably would have won if Scotty didn't do what Scotty did. Um, he didn't have his best stuff. He grinded. He stayed there. And I mean, honestly, to play those last two holes in one under the way he did, very impressive. Um, like he he almost had that putt go down on 18. I I, I don't know how I feel about Wyndham Clark yet, but um, like that's someone who can win big tournaments for sure. Like he's he's in the right headspace. Um, he's confident in his game, even when he doesn't have his best stuff. So I, I give him props there. But yeah, no no one was beating Scotty this week. I mean, Scotty, not only did Scotty hit the right shots, like he knew the number. Like he knew he had to get the twenty, and then he knew if he did get the twenty, the only person that was going to get there probably was going to be Xander, and he knew that he could beat him in a playoff purely because it was Xander. Um, so I, I mean, yeah, Scott Scotty did. I just can't believe you hold out to get that whole thing started. What he does. <laughs> yeah. But no, he's, I, I, yeah, he's, he's something, man. He is. I think the one shot that sticks out, I mean, the shot on 17 from Scotty to play it smart, like he did takes a lot of balls. Cause like, he's not in the last group. He doesn't have control of what goes on behind him, but he's smart enough to know that like, you know, playing the numbers out in his head. He makes par there. He's probably going to be good. Um, that's like something I think Spieth would do the exact opposite. Like Spieth would yeah. take it into his, into his own hands and go for that pin. Scott, Scotty just. And we know how that would probably end up. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Scotty plays the required shot like every that's... single time. He doesn't get too aggressive. He and and that that reminded me of like as soon as he hit that shot, um, because you know Scotty, like that's where he was aiming. Like, he, he did not miss. He was not going for the pin and ended up there. That's where he was aiming. And I immediately thought of Tiger on 12 at Augusta when he played it 60 feet left, when he wasn't in the control of the lead. Um, he had the lead after that hole, obviously. But I you just – you think of – I mean, he played the percentages and he knew that he'd be able to get that down in two. I'm sure he practiced that but a million times. I, I'm sure – I mean, when you're in Sky's position, you know there's a good chance you're probably going to be in contention on Sunday. 
and that shot might need to be in the bag. And I'm sure he practiced that putt from that lower bowl to that right corner a bunch. Um, and yeah, it was the required shot. I mean, there's there's way more you can gain going for a two. I mean, there's way more you can lose going for a two than gain playing it safe. He um, just never puts himself in danger, ever. No, never. Never, not at all. There's I never mean, like a moment of like, oh crap, we're about to make a double or we're about I mean, to make yeah, a square. It's just even when he makes a bogey, it's because he gets a good chip and misses a four footer. Yeah. Like he he like he doesn't make bogeys like anyone else on tour does. And and it, it is. It's incredible to watch. I don't want to say I'm appreciating it appreciating it because he sucked the soul out of me given I had um Xander and Clark to win the tournament, but uh, it was it it was something to watch that back nine. I mean Honestly, it uh, gave me glimpses and reminders of that Charlie Hoffman charge, um, throwing everything close. <laughs> um, but it, w- it was absurd. Like, everything was perfect on that back nine. It was That back nine was mesmerizing um, from, from Scotty. So, yeah. Thank you, Dan. I, uh, yeah, and I think, too, what, what added to it is, as you mentioned, the injury a little bit, but then also the – the guys that were around, and I know we touched on Xander a little bit for kind of <clears throat> fading down the stretch, um, missing that putt on 17, the two failed up and downs on 14, 15. But Wyndham Clark birdied 16, birdied 17, and had that putt on 18, rim out. Um, Brian Harmon was there for a, a big stretch of that. That was and a chilling like putt. It, it, yeah, it felt When Harmon like, rolled that, what was that, 15 when Harmon rolled that putt in? That was pretty chills. Yeah. The fist pump, the little man's fist pump was incredible. Yeah. To watch. And it's cool because if you think about the past, yeah, maybe eight months in golf since last the open last July, or even, even about a year, Scheffler's been awesome, obviously. Wyndham Clark's been great ever since he won the Wells yeah. And Brian Harmon's been a, like really, really good. So to see yeah. those three guys – play really well at these events um i think was it was really cool right this is yeah. supposed to be the the tours like big event and they got their best player to win and they got the two guys that have pretty cool stories and yeah. have also been playing really well over the past year to contend and seriously contend have putts on 18 to tie for the lead to go to a playoff and i don't think it could have the only way it works out better is if like Rory or, or Spieth or, you know, even Thomas, I suppose, is in that kind of picture more. I, I really it, think it, the, they should be happy with how the week played out. I really think the only way that ends up better is if Clark makes that putt and it goes to a playoff. I think a playoff would have been amazing for the tour. Yeah. 16, I mean, that would have been 18, yeah. That would have been cinema to watch. And it was cinema down the stretch. I mean, it's the best finish in recent memory. I mean, I. I was fully tuned in. I'm sure they had a bunch of people watching that finish over um, the selection show even, which was pretty impressive from them. I mean, very few results down the stretch that the players are going to give that sort of um, sort of draw um, from, yeah. for view, from viewers. So yeah, it, it was, it was a, it was a win week for the tour. Um, they promoted it like they always do. They hype it up as the fifth major, even though I know we all believe that it's, far from a major, but they hyped it up and then it delivered. And I, I think that's what the tour needed in this moment. Um, it was just really fun golf to watch down the stretch. What do you guys make of um, Scotty winning back to back? Cause it, to me that felt a little bit like, Oh, he's the first guy to ever do it, but I don't think it's sunk in or maybe has the meaning that like winning the masters back to back would have or winning. Cause obviously it's not a major, but no. you know, how to do something I think should matter. And so I'm curious yeah. how you kind of interpreted that, that moment of, Hey, this dude's won a massive tournament in back to back years. Yeah. Well, you think... Like winning a winning, like Riv back to back years. If I, I mean, you look at this course and we talked about this, like this is a Scotty Scheffler golf course. It is a plotters golf course. So, if anyone was going to do it, it would make sense, right? Like Tiger never loved these greens, uh, like the green complexes. So even though he was a plotter, I I can see why he didn't win. He probably just didn't get up and down enough or something like that. But uh, I just, 
it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, we, we all picked him in the triple double. Like we all, we yeah. this is this doesn't come as a surprise. Like he is Astro Worlds from every other player on tour right now, and I I, I don't think I make too much of it, but I. I I think there is something to be said about being the only person to win that tournament back to back. I can't think of how, like how many tournaments on tour do you think there are even are that haven't had someone win it back to back? I'd say pretty low. Probably not many. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I so, think I think to that point, like in 20 years, it'll probably mean more because you'll yeah, yeah, for sure. his career and say, wow, Scheffler's the only guy to win two players back to back. And He's also got X amount of majors and X amount of wins in general. Um, but I think in the moment, I and I think part of it is what you kind of touched on is like he was expected to win and he did. And therefore, it just feels a little bit like, oh, this is kind of what I thought would happen at the beginning of the week. And so it doesn't impact me as much as maybe I thought it might come Sunday. But I just thought it was an interesting kind of thought about um, where he – fits into golf's history and i guess it's so recent that it start it's hard to write that right now and understand it really well but um certainly in 5 10 15 years it'll be massive yeah it'll be massive yeah and and, and you look at the run that Scotty is on right now like i mean this is unseen since tiger right like even speeths was a like what this is Scotty's going on 2 plus years now of being a dominant force and there was a year where he was dominant and just didn't win like who knows what could happen in the next few months i mean i mean i'm looking at scotty as probably two to one at the houston i'd say like those are tiger numbers um so i don't know we'll see i i i I truly do believe that Scotty's peak is up there with the best ever. I mean, this is truly absurd what we're seeing. It sucks, but I don't really think it's a question now as a lot of people were hesitant to compare him to Spieth's peak, but I think it's pretty obvious now that Scotty's cleared that. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm really interested to see how these next few months go. Does he keep the momentum going? Because, I mean, you look at it this way, like, Scotty doesn't shoot what 64 on Sunday, loses that tournament and then doesn't win for another 3 months like maybe that's but now he's won like he wins another tournament in the next month and that's unbelievable like unheard of. Um so uh, I just it's it's impressive also because I just I the, the talent gap is so closed now. I mean, even compared to Spieth's 2015 year, I mean, Spieth won, what, five times 2015? Yeah. And I, and I just think that the talent is so much higher, even with Liv taking some players away. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't really have much more to say on that, but I, I think it's – I mean, we, as Dan said, maybe you do have to appreciate it because we're seeing something that we may never see again in our – in 80 years. Um, so, yeah. Anyone a major though? Well, I mean, we'll see. Uh, I, I, I would be shocked if he doesn't finish top ten. I, I'd even say top five in three of the four majors. Maybe there's one he doesn't play well in, but I mean, you do that, he's probably going to win one. I, I mean, I, I'd be shocked if he doesn't win that one of the first two. I mean, they both fit him so well. Um, yeah, I think Valhalla will be one that I've got circled. Obviously, he's won at Augusta, but I think there's, um, yeah. I think you can eliminate a lot more of the field at Valhalla than yeah. you can Augusta. Um, like, a, like a certain person. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but uh, Scotty's interesting because I that neck I think is, if they actually thought he was gonna withdraw on Friday night for a little bit like it's that's worth monitoring because if he um you know takes some time off and maybe doesn't get proper treatment on it every day and it stiffens up a little bit or whatever it might be 
I think that can kind of throw some things out of out of whack. Um, and I'm not suggesting that I want that to happen, but I think there's a I would be slightly concerned about uh that neck and, and just okay. kind of. You make a fair point because, like, let's say the neck injury like comes up at Houston, he might only win Houston by like four instead of eight. Like, if that neck injury comes up, like he. he... <laughs> he might only beat that field by four instead of eight, Dan. It's a fair point. And he might just not be locked in enough. You know, I think there's that, that five iron might go to 25 feet instead of 15 feet. Like it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> they're, yeah. They're um, you never know what these, these kind of runs of golf, like it's hard to maintain uh, this level of performance Um, and he'll be around, but I, it it wouldn't stun me if he had a not great masters week and like T8ed, you know what I'm saying? Like this just one of those kind of yeah. performances where it's like, ah, he's just not didn't yeah. quite flush it that way this week or made no putts, right? Like yeah. he's not um I don't think he's I don't think there's the mentality necessarily that you maybe saw with Tiger that made him immune to losing at times. I think with Scott yeah. like a um he's just in such a zone right now that's at a different different level um and i think sometimes a couple weeks off can kind of mess with you a little bit so we'll have to see i mean i'm look i'm not doubting that he's definitely the favorite at houston or valero probably houston um and probably will be very much in it and might win that tournament as well but um i don't know well we'll take it yeah um Will Gray just tweeted. Um, so Scotty is now five to one to win the Masters. Um, that is the shortest price at a major since 2015 when Spieth was at St. Andrews, and the shortest at Augusta in 11 years since Tiger in 2013. Well, so, those two didn't win theirs, so true, true, very true. I yes. wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, there's a certain someone around eighteen to one at Augusta that I wouldn't be putting my cash on either. So Speak, speaking of the certain someone, I wanted to congratulate Spieth. Um, miss cut, hundred to one hundred fifty yards strokes gained per shot. He is down to the third percentile. Oh, from hundred to one hundred fifty. So I like to congrat. I think he went from about the eighth percentile to the third. So congratulations, oh, Mr. Speed. Oh, actually, I thought we made some progress after API. We went from nine to thirteen, and now we're down to three. Well, third in proximity. He well, he's tenth in proximity, so he's you know a little bit higher in oh. proximity than strokes game per shot. Oh, but strokes yeah. game is third. Stroke. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, you put one in the water from hundred to hundred fifty. That ain't gonna help your case, like you did at API. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's talk, oh, Mr. Speed. <laughs> Uh, I don't know where you guys stand. Uh, and actually, I'll start off by his comment today, talking about how he thinks the results are closer than the numbers are showing. And I actually don't think he's lying. I, I actually think that the swing is pretty close. I mean, he's shown spurts of a good swing throughout the entire season uh, with every club. So I don't necessarily think the swing is in 2018, 2019, 2020 slump levels of, of darkness, but I don't think Spieth at, at this very day on March 18th, 2024, I don't think Spieth has ever been in a worse spot mentally than he currently is. Uh, I, I just, I tweet this out. I, I look at the way he shot, the two over and I told to Dan like he could have shot six or seven over this week missed the cut and I could have felt a million times better than I do with the way he shot his two over I mean it could not have been a more concerning two over par finish than it was he did not put a ball in the water which is essential I mean there's one on every hole at this course that that is the course's defense um and he missed the cut I mean, I, I, how many people do you think didn't put balls in the water this week? I, I don't have the number in front of me, but there's got to be 
I mean, I think he didn't Scotty put one in the water on Thursday. I think he made par, right? It helps when you only play two days. Yeah, yeah. but just I just but that just I know he hates these green plexes, green complexes. He actually putted well Thursday, but he's never chipped or, or putted well here. Um, but like he putted fine Thursday. Uh, he rolled in a nice good put, a few good putts Thursday, especially on that putted, front nine. Putted really well Thursday. Yeah, yeah, really well. Two shots Thursday. Yeah. Um <laughs> and two, two shots and still shot seventy four. Like that tells yeah, me it's how just, the ball striking was. Yeah, I, I just don't think he can commit to any golf shot right now. Um it's it's really concerning because you just don't go from Phoenix and Genesis type golf swinging and scoring to this um, without just being in a really bad spot mentally. And I, and I think it's really concerning because it's, I don't think he know I don't, I don't think I've ever seen some of the decisions made this week from him before. Um, it almost got to a point where I feel like on the back nine, he didn't even look like he wanted to be there Friday, which ended up producing what two under in the last three with that make on 18. Um, that's just not acceptable uh, from a professional golfer. I, I mean, we know he cares about winning. We know he want. we know he's a very competitive person, but I just, I don't think mentally he can commit to a shot right now. And that like Rory hit tons of committed golf swings this week, hit it well for the most part and hit like four balls in the water and beat him by 10 shots. The first two days, you're going to play better committing to golf shots and messing up more than you're going to do bailing out every single swing. Um, and I, and I think that's why we're in the spot that we are right now as as Spieth fans watching him do the same thing every week because I just don't think he's committing to anything. I think he's hitting it well on the range. He comes up and is starts thinking about the wind. Like, dude, it's blowing three miles an hour. Like, aim at the pin. And if it blows it left, it blows it left, and you have 12 feet. Like, it's it's like... It, it it seems so simple, but you you know he overthinks everything. That's always been the way he is. Um, and I, that's what got him to where he was in 2015. But at the same time, it's it's really hurting him right now, and it's pretty obvious as someone who's watching just a PJ Tour live stream. It'd be nice if he'd iron and wedge it better. What? It'd be nice if he'd hit an iron and a wedge shot better. That'd be nice. Yeah, but you also look at, like, I mean, you look at that shot into, what was it? Was it 11? It, I think it was one of the far five. I think it was 11 that sh- that shocked me the most, where he and Growler like got into a little scuffle because Growler was like, dude, it's it's like my hat's like blowing off my head. How can you not trust that's hurting? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess it's fair. Like, like how are you going to iron it if you think it's like, if you can't trust the wind that you're actually feeling? Like, then you're just, then you got swing thoughts going in your backswing. And of course, you, like, I don't think it's a technical thing. I'd say it's both. I don't think you have numbers as bad as he does if it isn't part technical. I, I mean, I, I'm not saying he's I'm not saying that on the range he's hitting it like prime like like prime tiger or Scotty right now. I'm just saying that I feel like he gets out of his own head this week and I and I and he probably makes the cut. I, I, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I think the most obvious point I or most obvious evidence to my point is the driver. Like there's some drive, like his driver has been pretty good this year, and there's some driver swings you don't really need to think about, right? And the swing's working off the tee this year. He's he's had some foul balls, but like m- most of the driver swings have been good. But then you get up to an approach shot with water right, and he can't commit to it. So I don't think the swing is n- anywhere near as bad as the numbers are showing. I think it's completely, um, completely mental. You just want him to play quicker? I, I think part that's of part of it. I, I don't think you need to dispute the 10 mile an hour into the wind um, and, and talk about what's going to happen if it's not blowing. Like, I, I think that's it's pretty rare that the wind just shifts in the middle of your backswing. 
Um, so I, I don't think you need to think about those things. And playing quicker would help. I mean, he has, what, a two-minute conversation with Mikey every time he steps up to an approach shot? Yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't I don't really know. Um, So we'll, we'll see. No, I, I – Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think he's thinking about, to your point, the wrong things about, like, sure. the process is not good. I tweeted this on Thursday. Um, well, I don't have the tweet in front of me, but I could if I wanted to. Uh, so maybe I'll pull that up. But he looked rushed in a sense. It was like he took a while to talk to Greller, but then the swing itself was actually extremely rushed and just kind of um all over the place so i i tweeted i said this is disgusting disgusting golf from speed j no patience no purpose in his routine everything's rushed and i almost i wanted him to just like slow down and take a breath like it seemed like the tempo was unbelievably quick um i have never had issues with a goofy pre-swing routine I don't care. I think that makes him play better because I think it gets him thinking about um, if you're going to take your time to hit a shot, I'd rather you think about hitting certain points than thinking about like all of the other factors that you can't control, you know? And so I'd rather him say, all right, this is the shot I'm going to hit. And now I'm going to do a little like weird thing because it gives me a purpose of how I'm going to hit that shot. And then I'm going to hit it. And that probably leads to playing quicker. Um, but you're right. He seems a little mentally Thursday was disappointing because he seemed mentally unable to plot Friday was much better plotting until he decided he just can't hit a cut right now to save his life with any piece of lumber. And, uh, that hybrid that he tried to hit a cut with just was so far left. Um, That was not a professional shot. No, it's not. Like I and I, he did it twice. He did it on Thursday on six. Was terrible. That that uh, um, got up against the bunker lip. Had to pitch out. Whatever. He was one under at that point too. Like there's a he had scrapped his way to somehow being one under. Has to pitch out. Makes bogey at six. Bogey at seven. Bogey at nine. And you end up with two over. That was a good save at um, six. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good. Yeah, he had to really make, compounded it. <laughs> he had to make an eight footer for bogey at six after pitching out of a fairway bunker. And then on 10, again, same thing. Gets back into the round a little bit. And it's I mean, hard for the tournament. Two under, just made a nice birdie at nine on a sand save. Comes out, snaps one, a hybrid straight into the trees, makes bogey because he plugs it in the yeah. front. Bunker, and then misses a four footer on 11. And it's like, <laughs> dude, like Friday was whatever. Fine. And, Thursday just felt rushed. There's, I don't know what the purpose is with the swing right now. I'd much rather see him doing all these crazy things because at least there's a direction and a goal. It felt like there was a goal. It was just other than like the end goal of the ball being next to the hole. There was no purpose to how that goal was going to be achieved. Uh, and the, that process of making a good swing felt rushed. Yeah. And it was I, overdone in the process of what's the ball going to do in the air and uh, mm-hmm. you know, how yeah. long is it playing? It's like, dude, Greller's a good mathematician. Trust his number. <laughs> yeah. And sack up and hit a golf shot. I like, think six was a great just summary of how, where we're at right now. Cause like you look at Scotty, like, and I'm not saying like Scotty does not have that tee shot on six in the bag, <laughs> but let's just say Scotty like hit a bird and bounced into that position. Like Scotty punches out and has eight feet for par. Like I can guarantee it. I can guarantee it. Maybe he misses the putt, but even if he misses the putt, it's just such a more professional way to make bogey than the way he did. Like I, I, I just, I, I don't know. It, it was perfect because it, it does suck because that type of swing is fully just, cannot happen like not only is that miss dead like you're missing your spot by 30 40 yards um but That's honestly like- it pissed me more off the way that he finished the hole i mean the yeah. fact that he had to make an eight footer i mean every shot that hole was so so poor 
Um, so yeah, it's, it's trying times. Depressing. It is. And, and, and I think this week will be very telling. Uh, he's got to play I, well this week. We'll get into it in our preview tomorrow, but he's yeah. got two starts before Augusta. Yeah, <laughs> no. It's kind of when he's, it's, yeah. it's went downhill. So he's yeah, got to play I, well this week. He was at the Bahamas, correct? Uh, I assume so for the meeting with the PIF folks, but just so. I mean, there was a flight out of Dallas that they were tracking flights, but he wouldn't have flown out of Dallas. No. I kind of, I, well, better I chance he so. did than Scotty did. <laughs> Yeah, but he Bob Harrig wrote an article for SI saying that Spieth was going to be at Sawgrass Saturday, Sunday to use their practice facilities. So, well, that's I, good I, to hear. <laughs> yeah, do you have to pay? I, I, I'm not. What's up? You have to pay to use the facilities over the weekend. Not if you're a board member. <laughs> I, I got it. But um, actually, I I think if you're a PJ Tour player, you actually have membership to the club. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, yeah. Fran Fran Quinn, who one of my best friends' uncle is, he he has a PJ Tour Champions card, and he can play that course for free anytime. That's um, sick. I, I it might be all the TPCs. I don't know. He's always at TPC Boston. I don't know whether he's just a member there. It, it probably is, right? Like if you think about it, TPCs are PJ. It's Tour. the tournament players. Yeah. Club or something. So yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. It pro- they probably do all have membership there. Um. The good news for Spieth probably didn't have any issues finding a spot on the range over the weekend. So that's probably not. No, no, no. Yep. Yep. And he's he's bounced he typically bounces back from missed cuts. He does. Since, since the resumption of good play in his career, um, like in twenty twenty one, he's done a good job of bouncing back from missed cut. Uh with the exception of the US Open, Scottish Open last summer, which Big gap and wrist injury, and don't want to, you know, yeah. some other factors there. Uh, there's still a few too many foul balls in the bag, especially off the tee. He yeah. said his driver was broken. I'm not sure how you don't just get the same damn driver. You know, you don't have like five of them lined up. In your wait, 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 wait. I I didn't even know this. <laughs> no, yeah, the he. Broke his driver at the API. Well, and so he wasn't happy with its performance on Thursday at the players and spent a lot okay, of time okay. fixing let, that. Let me get a few things out of the way there. First of all, if he breaks his driver on the range at on Thursday morning, he should have a driver ready to go for the first tee. I, I don't know how you go a full sex. week. Now, I wouldn't put it pa- – I mean, there is that possibility he just didn't touch the driver from Sunday to Thursday. No way. But <laughs> I just don't know how that happens. No, it's, I, just I, a, he, it's just a lack of accountability on all fronts. I don't know. But, but hey, but hey. I mean, who knows? Who knows how Fitzpatrick really did what he did, which is just True. hilarious That's a crazy stuff. story that he just had a weight in his driver for a year basically. i don't buy that story either <laughs> it's you a don't. full day well well dan dan rapport weight. reported it so that's even more reason for me to not buy it do you guys know what four grams weighs you would never be able to tell the difference ever wouldn't that prove his point four grams is like three coffee beans yeah but wouldn't that prove his point if you can't tell the difference no but he was saying it was that was what was causing him to drive it poorly to which I mean, saying, that's very yes. possible. I, I disagree with you there. I, I do think that f- while four grams may not be able to tell when you're holding the driver, depending on where it is put on the driver, could that that could very well affect with how fast you swing it. I guess. That, that, that very well could affect how the ball is just so small. But but given his he would have been practicing with that driver for a long time and he wasn't hitting it well. So it was like something. Yeah. You know, Let's see something. You're still, you're, you're, all your practice swings are with the four grams in it, and you're still hitting it bad. And then you remove four grams randomly, and then you just start flushing it. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I'm listen. I I don't know whether he knows, like, like, but like from a fan's perspective, like everything he's doing right now is just like just an absolute knee to the nuts. 
Like, it's just like, that's fair. Like, it's not even what he's doing on the golf course. It's the things he says after. And then it's the way he comes off of a foul ball is like, oh, yeah, there's a crack in the front of my, like, what? Like, it's just like everything that's going through the whole process. It, like, it's all just a kick in the nuts. Um, And I don't know whether he knows that. I mean, it also just could be like a mental thing where he just like wants to say that this stuff, he doesn't actually believe it. That's possible. And I'm fine with that. I don't really care. But if he actually believes all this stuff and isn't taking accountability for it, it's, it's, it's frustrating. Um, There's just never sustained momentum with Spieth. No. And, and, and that's exactly Ever. what we talked like, what did he get to one under two under? Yeah. One under. And as soon as he bogeyed, he never got back there. And bad weeks just bleed into other weeks. Like there's they're like good golfers, they'll have a one off bad week and immediately return to like good form. Yeah. Just like Speak, Scott. Just, like... just just like Scott. He um yeah. what was it? What was it? T five at Phoenix and he bounced back with a win at the API. So good good for him. Yeah. Like I mean you go from the DQ five at Genesis. Yeah. You go from DQ to really bad performance. Well, not really bad at API, but not very good at API. You're just completely taking yourself out of the players in 18 holes. Yeah. It's, it's like. Did Scott shoot over par this week at all in any rounds? No, though? of course not. He hasn't shot over par this year. Yeah. So it's been like a year. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't shoot. I'm not asking Spieth to do that because that's just not fair. But like the 77s, the 74s, like these should be once in a month type of things, not. Twice in two weeks. Yeah, and, and you know, I, 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 I really did say last, like last week, that I, I wouldn't put any weight into this week. But it's tough when just the way that he, it's the way that he got to where he did. It wasn't the score. Like he missed the cut here in 2015 at the peak of his powers. But it's just the way that he missed the cut. That is by far the most concerning thing of the entire, the entire year. The sixth missed cut here. Yeah. yeah, which I don't. Nice half dozen. I don't really care that much. I mean, if if Spieth um is like fine going forward, like, and he keeps and he just never gets a like if he comes and gets back to being a top player in the world, he never finishes career with a players championship. I'll live. <laughs> um, and we have seen that you can play well here on an, on an, just at random, like like mm-hmm. there's really no numbers here. So who knows? Maybe next year he'll come back. He's playing decent, and he'll con- contend. Yeah, it's like possible. who knows? It's more for me. It's more disappointment than I'd say depression. Um, just because like he doesn't look. To just looking ahead here to Augusta in a few weeks, he doesn't look like he's someone that can conjure up what's needed to be conjured up to win there as of right now. Yeah. He just, he doesn't, I mean, he's not even in the contention phase right now. He's trying to get there first. Um, I just don't think he can plot. It's not, so it's disappointment, not depression, because I'm disappointed with what we've seen as of late, but I think he could play well at Valspar. I think, if, as Dan kind of alluded to, if he can just reel in the foul ball off the tee, he can play well at Valspar. I think it's a decent course fit for him right now with what he's currently rocking. But it's just disappointment because I just don't think he, with how much time we have left, which is two tournaments, that he is going – and obviously he'll com- he'll contend at Valspar, and I'll change what I'm saying. But, like, to me, he doesn't seem like – you watch a guy like Scheffler or Clark. These guys have their game and gear already ready. Spieth's mm-hmm. game is not at that point, and I just don't think he can get there between now and then. Yeah, and that's the thing, because I can so clearly see Spieth being two under on the front nine on Thursday at Augusta, birdieing 10, pulling it out of his ass, and then just one bad swing into the water 11, making double, then bogeying 12, and then all the progress is gone with just sloppy two holds. Like that's like I could see that so clearly in my mind, and then a sloppy par on thirteen to just a poopy par to just drive into the pine straw, <laughs> uh, drive in the pine straw, punch out, wedge to twenty five feet. Yep, I just it's 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 that stuff. Like it's becoming such a trend. 
<laughs> like I, the golf swing is not great, but you look at players like, like Joel Damon, who hasn't done shit for months, find something on the range Thursday night and finish his T10. Like he's like he's a professional golfer. If meant if if it was just the swing. Like that could like he's a professional golfer. He's playing every day. We I hope like he like he could he'll just find something eventually. But it, I think I think it's just I I don't I I think Jordan Spieth goes into tournaments already crossed off the list because he doesn't believe his game's fully there, and I don't think he can win believing that his game's not fully there on Thursday morning. Well, he just never makes it easy on himself. And he doesn't, no. That's, like, who he is, and that's why he gets memed on Twitter, and that's, I guess, why, like, people love him, because it's never easy. It'd be nice if it was easy. Just for one tournament. Just for... It's just, yeah, I mean, it's always... It's just stress. Like, even AP... Oh, let's go back to API for a second. Like, that yeah. first round, like, it's yeah. going great, and then this dumbass yeah. double-crosses it out of bounds on 16. Yeah. Sorry. I have a per... Like, describe this. I, I, right now... You give Scotty Scheffler Spieth swing, just swing <laughs> his swing. I think Scotty finishes top ten in Augusta still easily. I think if you give Spieth Scotty swing, he will struggle to win at Augusta. Because even with Scotty swing, he's going to be making the same decisions. Oh, okay. That are going to cost him a golf tournament, and. I think Scotty can play the correct shot throughout Augusta with speed swing and do just fine. Like there will be some bigger misses than we're accustomed to seeing Scotty usually do, but I think he can do just fine. And I think even if Spieth had prime woods swing right now, <laughs> if his mental confidence and his way of getting around the golf course did the same, he'd be in the, he'd be in a similar spot. So I, 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 that's why I'm struggling to get hope up for the Valspar, but he needs to at least mentally get some confidence going coming into Augusta. And because that, that by hitting good shots after good shots after good yeah. shots. Yeah. And I, I think guess. I think it can it can build itself up, but to only have eight rounds to get to a point where you think you can win the Masters is ridiculous. Like I think the he has to like seriously seriously contend in both and or win one of these next tournaments to give me hope that's actually legitimate for the masters be nice to move up from the third percentile yeah that'd be a good start as well yeah that's that's atrocious by the way (laughs) it's pathetic it's disgusting He's supposed to be one of the best shorter iron players in the world. And you're literally, there's 97% of the PGA tour is better than you at this. Yeah. I've had, (laughs) I've had enough of the announcers talking about speeds play from 50 to 150 yards as world-class. That's bad. I mean, yeah, it's not terrible from 50 to a hundred. I don't think it's not better. That's not where it should be for him. Well, it's like, tough to, to like decrease from the third percentile. Yeah, we'll we'll try. We'll keep, arm, that sure. is a keep, baffling number. We'll keep tracking it. Uh, plenty of chances to change that at Valspar, I think. So that'll be fine. Yeah. It's the worst part of his game right now. I know. But the yeah, doubt is probably 100 Scotty 150 is, yards. Scotty in every iron category is like 99th percentile. Yeah. Except for over 200 where he's 96th. Oh, only the 96%. Did he go two over even this week? Speed? Yeah. Yeah. His numbers on Friday actually aren't that bad. If anybody's looking for any serious help. Congrats to Speed on 72. (laughs) Congrats on a not too bad Friday. Yeah. Um, Nice little chip in the shoe. Well, he didn't chip and putt on Friday. He was much better off the tee. Iron play was average, um, which isn't good. Like, that's the we keep coming back and just set it from 100 to 150. It's just not good enough with those scoring clubs because there's good shots in there, but there's some atrocious shots in there that just cannot be in the bag for a, a 
15th ranked player in the world. Um, somebody who expects to win at Augusta National. You cannot be hitting shots that lead to bogeys from the fairway. Yeah. Um, and they're still there. And it's disappointing. And it's He's... like, let's figure this stuff out. Congrats to Spieth, by the way, on, on gaining strokes on the field on Friday. I didn't know we did that. Yeah. You're asking Spieth. I mean, he's if, close. If just, yeah, I'm doing, just, the, I'm doing the I'm, shots gained right now. And um, if you just looked at his numbers on Friday, you'd say, ah, just didn't make any putts. But <laughs> you watch the round and you're like, dude. Yeah. Snap hook with the hybrid on 10 and then follow it up with um, the missed four footer on 11 after a beautiful chip shot. 14 was an adventure. Well, yeah, 14 was kind of <laughs> – that one just put the nail in the coffin. That was the white flag. Yeah. Yeah, my computer's about to die. Um, I've basically said everything I need to say, so if I do leave, you guys can close it off. But um, That's all I got. Is, no, he's – Yeah. He's very close to nearing a below-average approach player, so I think we should – if we can get that fixed, we'll be on a much better trend, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, not much time to get that fixed. Hopefully, oh. some of the good facilities at TPC. Yeah, out a little bit, but tell C McCormick to get on it. Yeah, well, sad stuff. <laughs> well, we'll there's we'll some, be back to recap some. it. We'll, we'll be, be back, back to preview the Valspar. Should I say we will? We will. We will. It'll be a good week. Sure. Please. See y'all then. Take care. Peace.